Hello and welcome to the Enlightened Times podcast. I'm Mark Conlon and this is going to be the first of many, many podcasts in the future. And I've got a really special guest on today uh, and a good friend. And his name is Paul Northridge and he's an author. He's co-founder of Unite Planet. And Paul, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Mark. Thanks for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. It really is a pleasure. Yeah, it took a little bit of going to get this get this together, but we finally made it. It's been in the making for a few months now. But yeah, so it's good to see you, Paul. And yeah, really, I just wanted to invite you on for the first podcast to kick off. So this is the inaugural podcast, uh, mm -hmm. first ever for me. Uh, you've done yeah. many. So uh, <laughs> yeah, perhaps you can teach me a few tricks <laughs> along the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. Okay. This is going to be all about you, Paul, and, and your book, your life, your experiences, um, near-death experience, and just wherever you feel comfortable to go is absolutely okay. fine for this podcast. Right. And it's all about people and and their personal experiences as well. So uh, we'll dive right into it anyway, Paul. Um, okay. If you'd just like to tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey, or you know, just a thumbnail sketch to get going, and then we can dive off into different places yeah okay yeah sure um so i was born in uh, 1972 and uh, i was born with uh, spina, spina bifida um so i was uh, basically a bit of a surprise uh, to my parents because uh, they don't have uh, in 70s uh, scans uh so uh, i was doing gymnastics when i came out of uh, my mum i was literally uh, had no hip so my uh my leg was literally over my shoulder. Wow. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's what I was, I was doing the splits when I came out, doing the acrobats and stuff like that. And, um, and yeah, I was uh, basically um, having a, a big hole in my spine, uh, size of a uh, two pence, uh, two pence piece. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just above my bottom. And uh, uh, so, yeah, it was quite a, a lot of uh, fluid going out a lot of blood was going out and uh, so i was at death death doors quite early on um and uh, anyway so major surgery had to happen straight away um so mum and dad said hi bye and off i went into have surgery and uh, yeah so they sewed the, the hole up and then um after that happened um hydrocephalus uh, came in um basically hydrocephalus is uh, basically fluid on the brain and uh, or water on the brain, I don't know what it is really, but fluid anyway. And uh, literally, uh, I was not well again, I was literally on death doors again with, with that. Um, and uh, so I was going to do a, a thing called shunt, um, a shunt operation. Mm -hmm. So it's a metal um, uh, fixation around the, the head, a bit like a halo, uh, and able to like drain the fluid um, from, from that. But uh, anyway, the night before the operation, uh, they basically, uh, my parents wanted to baptise me. My mum's Catholic. Uh, so they um, was going to baptise me. They did that. And uh, going in the car back home, my parents said, uh, I really hope that the, the baptism uh, works. And uh, miraculously, overnight, uh, my uh, agicophilus started to get less and less and less overnight. And my brain didn't swell anymore. Uh, so um, yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm not religious. I'm not uh, I'm more spiritual, if I'm honest with you. Uh, but something definitely happened that night. I feel right. And wow. So that, that's my that's my start of it of, of, of life anyway. So there you go. <laughs> wow, and what a start there, Paul. I mean, uh, mm. that must have been for your parents. That must have been a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah, a bit of a difficult. shock. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because my brother was uh, my brother is uh, completely fine. He's he's normal. In normal goes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a professional golfer. Uh, wow. that kind of thing. So he's very very sporty guy. Uh, so you know, opposite to 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 that is me. Uh, but I still keep myself active. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm. Yes, I'm more of a wheelchair user these days. Uh, it's just how it goes. I'm I'm 50 now. Um, so it, it's just part of life, you know. I'm, I've, I've accepted that I'm going to be more dependent on on things now. It's just it's what it is. Right. So there's something there that, like you say, about accepting, you know, about being independent, wasn't there? I guess. And, and just to let the viewers know and the yeah. uh, listeners, I have read your book, 
So mm -hmm. I'm quite familiar with some of the areas and, and, and what you're telling us there. So, yeah, I mean, how, mm -hmm. how was your schooling? Because obviously you, you, you know, growing up as a child, um, with, you know, these challenges you faced, what, how was school with that? Because that, you know, I can't imagine how that, that might be. Yeah, it was uh, it was challenging uh, yeah. because uh, it was a Catholic school, right. and uh, and basically there was no other one. Uh, no other children were disabled, so I was like uh, the the main person to look at really because I was it was quite an obvious yeah. disability. Um, yeah. The the issue was that uh, because of the hole in the back uh, meant that my right leg was uh, what it is uh, ninety percent eighty percent paralysed. Right, I can't okay. feel, yeah, I can't feel most of my leg, uh, mm -hmm. my right leg. Um, and that meant that the right leg was not growing as fast as the left leg. Um, it's just one of those factors. And um, so basically, the um, I had to then have a built-up shoe and also calipers and stuff like that. Uh, so it's also got people's attention that way. And uh, yeah, so lots of bullying going off. And uh, yeah, it wasn't the best time, uh, you know, it's again what it is, you know. I I, I cannot understand why people, you well, children, will bully because yeah. again they're not happy in their lives, so they they will uh, reflect that onto people that they can easily victimize. Uh, it's just again a fact of life. It's yeah. not. Uh, I don't. I don't think that you know they deserve you know everything they get for for being the bully. I think obviously they've had it tough, and that's the reason why they they did what they did. So you know, I can't like. Uh, you know, pass, pass that by a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the bullying sounded difficult from, you know, again, from what I read in your book and that difficult time growing up. Um, mm -hmm. And there's something with the teachers, wasn't there as well, uh, where you had some connections or well, in some cases, not a connection. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, at playtime, you mentioned in your book that you, you're quite isolated, wasn't you? You take yourself away. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, more um, daydreaming kind of a guy, yeah. doing that. and yeah. Um, yeah, so I used to be by myself a lot, and uh, I used to have things like uh, uh, matchbox cars that I used to like, and also um, a calculator, which had a game on it, like a numbers game. All right. I, I could like uh, add up, uh, well, in my young, young years, it was like adding 10, so seven plus three, five plus five, yeah. all those kind of things. And I just say, I used to enjoy that numbers game. And it was like a bit of a time to do it in as well. And I used to enjoy that as well. So that was, yeah, that's what I used to do. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, how, um, obviously we mentioned earlier about that must have been quite difficult for your parents as well. Because they was, from, from what, again, what I read in the book was, there was, you know, there's a lot of commitment there to running you around and, um you know, you'd get days off school, wouldn't you, to go to hospital, which you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> um, many, many times. Yeah. So, I mean, what was the relationship like with your parents? With that was was it quite close? Yeah, very, very good. Um, how it would work was basically that uh, dad would be the one that would keep me at the bottom uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, try and, like, motivate me that way because, yeah. I, I say being a kid, I, I didn't understand it fully. I, and... The weirdest thing is that I didn't understand that I had a disability until really yeah. secondary school. I know it's weird to say, but yeah. I used to think, you know, why are these kids mocking me walking like this? Because I couldn't see myself. Yeah, and I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see the, the, the feel like I was like doing this, you know, yeah. movement when and all this kind of thing. And I and I think like so, you know, I didn't understand that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, my my dad would be the one that would be kicking me at the bottom, and um, and I would be quite. A little bit lazy, uh, but I will still do lots of things. But I uh, did things like uh, he built a scaffolding outside the house, so I can right. use it for a tread treadmill, walk yep. up and down in plaster. Because I had a, uh, quite a lot of operations, so I was in plaster a lot. And so to be able to like get my muscles working, I used to have a treadmill outside with scaffolding. Um, there's been mm -hmm. things like um, uh, like weights. Um, but I used to like. Uh, because my leg was not very good with uh, muscles and stuff like that. So we used to like have a sling with yeah. weights in it and I used to do exercises with it and all, all sorts of things. So very uh, thinking outside the box uh, kind of guy. 
And um, yeah, so when the when the days got a bit tough with my dad, uh, my mum was then the, the person that would be uh, the, sh- the shoulder to cry on type of thing. And and so it worked well like a good cop, bad cop um, scenario, really. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. You, that, your dad was very much then, he's very hands on then, with, you know, trying to motivate you and keep you on yeah. the straight and narrow, yeah. I guess. Yeah, than, definitely. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, really, I mean, my, uh, I, I think I would be um, how I am now as a, in character is like, um, I don't like using the word stubborn. I don't think I am stubborn. I'm more determined. Um, yeah. Some people call it stubborn, but I call it determination. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, so I think I, I, come, I come from that that perspective. I, I've got to be doing things. I've got to be um, motivated and, yeah. and always always doing things. I'm also thinking outside the box, like my, like my dad as well. So yeah. I like to think outside the box a lot. Yeah, yeah. So Paul, I mean, with with school and that, you, you mentioned that you didn't, you weren't really noticing why perhaps the other children were, you know, focusing on you and their point of attention was towards you. So you, you wasn't yeah. at this point. You wasn't aware about you know uh, the differences between yourself and the other the children. At that point. So so when mm-hmm. did that begin to uh, happen? Where you uh, noticed you know that you you know different you know compared yeah. to other children. Um, yeah, it started more like the secondary school when I when I started secondary school. Yeah. Um, that's where it really started to hit me. I think, uh, yeah, being young and uh, being unaware and, like I say, not seeing myself walking because you don't yeah. see yourself. And when I was in uh, primary school, I felt like uh, every time I have a summer holiday, it was like an operation going off. Yeah. And I thought, as a kid does, I bet all these other kids are doing the same thing as me. You know what I mean? It's just my, yeah. my, how my brain was working at the time. Um, anyway, so get to secondary school and then... Um, They've been told uh, the class uh, in July or when they were when they broke up. They said you're going to be a disabled lad. Make him yeah. feel welcome, but don't do too. You know, don't go over mad. Whatever. I don't know what they said to them exactly, yeah. but anyway, it made them really curious. When I got in uh, on, on the first day there, it was literally a whole. Uh, it felt like I was like uh, Johnny Depp at the uh, court case or something like that. Yeah. Loads of people there flocking around me. What's, what's your tell me tell me tell me what's this yeah. and literally I just, I just broke down in tears I just couldn't handle it I was like wow. whoa yeah I was, I was just like that was like a heartbreaking uh, day really unfortunately it was not the nicest day of school, first day of school yeah. in secondary school um, yeah but I broke down in tears because it, it, it uh, was quite overwhelming yeah I was gonna I was gonna say that must have been a very overwhelming experience then you know, you know re- reporting to school and then you you get that type of you know reaction or attention, you know it's quite yeah. um yeah like you say it's quite overwhelming. So I mean, mm. did you make any connection with the teachers? Because um, I mean that can be quite important at school. Or was a like a, a disconnection for you as a as, you know you school? Um, yeah, lots of uh, teachers uh, were quite hard to understand and work it out because I mean yeah. I lost I. I I lost a lot of schooling through operations. I, yeah. I was not good at maths and uh, all sorts of things like that. So I was in remedial classes, which was not the, again, a lot of bullies were in, in that, these classes as well. Yeah. So it was quite not yeah. nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so some teachers were not nice, especially the lady in, in remedial uh, class. She was not the best teacher. Um, but then there was other good teachers. Um, there was uh, Mr. Archer. Uh, right. He was the uh, Archer. Our teacher and uh, lovely, lovely guy. Play guitar when when was uh, doing some artwork. He was playing guitar or, or showing us what to do. Very, very creative, but easy going. You know, like like you to be you during the lessons yeah. rather than you know you could daydream and stuff like that. Use your use your yeah. brain elsewhere. Yeah, creative. Quite an open teacher then the way he, you know yeah. conducts his classes. Yeah, so that yeah that's great. Um, mm. So, Paul, can you tell me a little bit about your involvement in music and how that got started? Uh, yeah, um, so I was uh, 11 when I started to play the um, the organ. Um, yeah. I became a, uh, an avid fan of my uh, cousin. Uh, my, my cousin, uh, great guy, again, um, very uh, spiritual and um, 
very, very, very funny and uh, lo- lovely guy all, all the way around, really, to watch you. And uh, yeah, so um, he was playing the organ when he was younger um, and he still dabbles on, on music uh, instruments as well. He's, uh, he plays keyboards, guitar, and many, many, many things. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, I saw him play the organ and uh, I thought, that's what I want to play. And right. uh, then it, that was it. It's got the, got the bug uh, from there. And um, yeah, so I've been playing the organ since I was 11. And when I got to uh, college, um, I started then getting further and further into that. And uh, I started doing grades. I got to grade eight on the organ, oh, wow. which was yeah. not bad, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I got to grade five on piano uh, as well. Um, yeah, so it uh, helped me to do many, many things. In, and then in the future, I, I've i been in bands uh, like yourself, uh, mm-hmm. in uh, keyboard playing in a, a band uh, called Jinx, and uh, mm-hmm. two, yeah, two, two, uh, two great lady singers, um, and still keeping contact with each other. Um, bass guitarist, brilliant bass, bass guitarist, drummer, superb, all, all, all very, very good. Um, and um, yeah, so we played around uh, many, many places, London, even um, so, quite a lot of gigs. Um, and then I was also done solo stuff. I've uh, been playing in uh, pubs, clubs. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was, I was doing really well, and lots of uh, stroke clubs as well. People who've had strokes. Yeah, um, I've, I've done lots of charity stuff as well for, for them. Um, and uh, yeah, then I became a teacher. I did uh, piano, organ uh, lessons. Um, I was there for four years doing that as well. Wow! So that's quite a prominent area then in your life. In in was, and this was earlier on, wasn't it, Paul? In in you? Yeah, yeah. yeah About uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I started to, when I was eleven to play it. So I by twenty uh, something, I, I was definitely thinking. You know, I've got to grade eight already now, and I'm thinking. Uh, what did I want to do? Uh, I was working at Thornton's. Uh, that was yeah. my one of my, my first jobs. Um, and I was there for four years as well. So but during those four years, I started to build up my lessons. Yeah. Um, and uh, so even, evenings, I was doing teaching. Uh, daytime, I was doing Thornton's, packing chocolates and eating half of them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to, I used to like that job to us, yeah. And I met some great people uh, through Thornton's, um, and uh, that includes uh, Johnny from uh, United Planet. Oh, um, yes, so I met, yes, yeah. yeah I, met, I met Johnny there, and uh, I met uh, a gentleman called uh, Mark, uh, Mark Lilly, uh, yeah. and uh, he's also a very talented guy. I've been playing keyboards for him as well. Um, and because uh, he's a composer and, and he's also wrote a theme tune for you know Planet, uh, maybe do videos. Oh, yes, uh, yes. He, the, uh, the theme tunes that we've used, it's been her, his music. Um, we do a bit of uh, changes every now and again, though, so it's not always Mark's uh, pieces, but yeah. we try to make it a bit more, um, a lot of variation going off in our videos anyway. That's what we try to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, so this is a, a, a major part then. So this was this helpful then for you, you know, in your life, the music? Was that something that, you know, was able for you to, you know, sometimes take you away from, you know, situations, isn't it, and things like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, with the uh, organ, I could plug my earphones in and uh, just listen to myself playing over and over because I used to wind up uh, my family so much with uh, certain pieces of music I... I, I can remember playing uh, Blaze Away. This is a, it's a, it's a march. Yeah. Uh, Blaze yeah. Away, and uh, and I used to get uh, same part wrong uh, all the time. So right. my, my brother used to think, "Paul, oh, just put your earphones in now." I said, "No, thank you, Ram." So we'll go behind the earphones on. And so I used to then practice with me earphones instead. Uh, yeah, but uh, but when I once I mastered it, and then it was like cranking it up, and I was playing it, and my family loved it, and. Playing Christmas songs at obviously Christmas time, it, it made a nice uh, family uh, feeling as well at Christmas uh, to play you know songs for them and everyone could sing along with me and which is nice as well. So I've done a lots of um, uh, organ um, at um, organ playing at uh, wel- welfare's, minors you know minors welfare yeah. clubs, yeah. Uh, social clubs, and uh, so used to get all the uh, sing alongs like uh, Long Way to Tipperary. And, yeah, and all yeah. Lessons. I've done all that as well. Really getting the crowd going there, Paul, yeah. Yeah, yeah. try to, try to. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is, I mean, 
just a connection which we'll get on to later on is uh, which you, your wife is musical as well, yes. which is a big, yeah, and, and obviously this, uh, what you was told about how you'd meet your wife, that was mm-hmm. in the book as well, which we, we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. So, because yep. um, that's really interesting. Just one thing I would say about the book, you know, for listeners who, who and, you know, viewers who do get the book, it's got some humour in. It's very humorous, I found, as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah, which yeah. was made it, and, and it even, well, not, not an easier read, but it just adds to um, your imagination when you're trying to, you know, imagine, you know, your journey, Paul, really. So that was really good to, that, that humour shown through, you know, in the book as well. Um, yeah, I think it's important. I think it's important yeah. to have humour because uh, yeah. I think, uh, again, I think life is 50-50, male, female, black, white, good, yeah. bad. You've got to have yeah. the humour along with the, the sadness and, and that's what it's yeah. about, I think. So, Paul, I just want to get into about the near-death experience you uh, ex- you had and just wondering when that was and, and what happened and the situation behind that and, and just a little bit about that, which you, know, you can share with the uh, viewers. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I was uh, 14 uh, when it happened. Um, so um, I was quite a, an experienced um, guy in the hospital. Um, I've had, uh, by then... At 14, I was probably having around about 12 operations, maybe 13. Um, so I was quite, you know, quite well known in the hospital um, area. Um, and uh, so being a 14-year-old, um, I was flirting with the nurses by that time. And, you know, I was, you know testosterone yeah. was going a little bit, you know. So uh, one particular nurse I did like. So I was, uh, so I had a, um, given a, two, two things before the operation was to happen. I was given a... Um, what's it called, a pre-med or something like that. So it yeah. made, made me feel rather drunk. So that was yeah. the first thing that went in. Um, and uh, that's where I started to like flirt with the nurse even more. Um, and then um, then they gave me a muscle relaxant. Um, so the operation that I was going to have was called uh, Verona. And um, so the Verona is basically where the, um, I've forgot, forgotten what the uh, bone is, but basically it's the, it's, one from, it's the long bone from the hip to the knee. Yeah, um, yeah. Tibia, yeah, tibia. We're, we're not on anatomy. Yeah. No, I'm not. No uh, test there. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I, got, I think I, yeah. I think I'll F in the biology. So, anyway. yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, so the, the long bone, anyway. So, the bone was then to be um, broken in, in half, and then two pins on both sides of the break. And then, and then on, on the outside of my leg uh, was a fixator. So, it was like basically a um, device that was. Uh, outside the, the leg uh, with a key and right. uh, so uh, on a daily basis then once I came home my dad would then turn the key and my leg on that from that break used to like go a little bit a little bit a little bit a little bit oh, right. further and yeah. um, so in a, in a short period of time it was like a, an inch and, and maybe an inch and a half and my leg grew so it stretched quite a lot in that uh, time frame anyway so uh, in order to have the say to put on uh, they had to give me a, a muscle uh, relaxant. Right. Now, the, the, yeah, so this this relaxant um, had a major reaction to me. Um, so while, when I had it in me, uh, something like whooshed into my body uh, and um, I felt very discomfort, uh, not to the point where I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die, but I felt really not well. And, um, and I felt my hands really relaxed. It really hurt so I looked at my hands and I'm seeing like big red uh, hands swollen yeah um and I'm thinking to myself oh this is weird uh, and I said to Mr Newton my, my surgeon because he's prepping himself over there I said Mr Newton because I, I again I'm, I'm knowing him very very well by then yeah uh, Mr Newton look at look at this and he, he's then turned around from preparing and I go and, it, <laughs> and then I see his face like oh my god um, and then next thing, bam, I'm out, and um, so it's black. So maybe I passed out uh, or something like that. But uh, anyway, so time becomes not really relevant anymore in this in this realm. Um, so I don't know how long it was black for, but I'm seeing black in my vision, I guess. Yeah. Whatever it is. Um, and then uh, from then, I'm then coming out of my 
body. Um, and then I'm seeing myself from a, an angle. Uh, again, I'm not very good at maths again. I've got, I've got uh, terrible results in maths. So I'm at an angle like that uh, towards myself. So I'm high up uh, towards the ceiling uh, yeah. and looking down. Um, and I'm seeing people panicking around me, a surgeon and, and uh, nurses trying to help me uh, to get myself back into life again. And um, so then as I'm looking there, I'm not panicking. I'm, I'm very, very calm. That's my body. That's, that's, that's you know, just, just get my surrounded, get my bearings. Um, and then uh, as I'm doing that, uh, then three beings of light uh, came to me. Uh, and that's where um, they basically gave a lot of love. And I felt like I know them. Um, hard to describe. Um, there weren't people. Um, they were like beings of light. So that's what I can say. Um, and it was like, um, there's a Lloyd, um, gentleman called um, Lloyd Canning, a very good artist. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and he painted, uh, I think it's called The Eternal Spirit or The Eternal Soul. Um, and that's a painting that uh, when I did, uh, well, when, when we did an interview with uh, Lloyd uh, back yeah. about two, yeah. three years ago, a bit more, um, he basically showed all his paintings out. And then next one, this eternal soul and spirit came out and um, I thought, oh my goodness, exactly what I saw when, when I had this near-death experience. So he basically painted what I, what I saw. Um, and uh, so uh, I'll, uh, if I'll give you a link uh, to, yeah, to get yeah. uh, onto that. Um, yeah, so the three beings of light um, were very, very loving, very, you know, you don't want to see that, Paul. I don't think you took in my name. Uh, we're not even names in this realm. I think you don't want to see that. And I, I'm not, they're not talking to me. They've got no mouths. No, this is all uh, telepathic. And um, and I'm saying, yeah, yeah, okay. I don't want to go. I don't want to see that anymore. Anyway, I'm not scared, not horrible, not horrified or anything like that. But I just, yeah, okay, fine. So off of, once I agreed, say, yeah, let's go. Um, off, I, off I went. And, um, and then momentarily, I'm in this next uh, realm. Uh, where I'm having all sorts of things going off, um, almost like a tour around the place. So I'm, I'm seeing uh, other souls having their um, arrival as well. Um, other ones that have been there for a bit longer already. Some are getting um, in a, like a, a booth that's uh, recharging their own energy back. Maybe they've had a horrible, terrifying experience and they're getting their... Um, the energy back. I don't know what it was exactly, but it's some kind of booth. Um, I can see colors going off and all sorts of things going off there. Um, I saw a ball game going off in the, you know, so we're not able to walk or a table like that. We have, uh, uh, there's no legs or anything like that. So, um, you know, so it's, you're able to like, fly, you're able to go on the ground. It's, it's, it's not really yeah. ground. Yeah, hard to describe. It's not. It's not like uh, what's that? What we have in in the earth. Um, there's no land or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah. So uh, what else did I see? Um, so yeah, board games going off. Um, lots of fun there. Then I was invited then to have a life review, um, and that's where this um, this chance where I could see lots of things going off. That's that was huge. It's it's basically seeing past, present, future. I could see my parents in the kitchen at present time, and I could see what their thoughts were. I could see that, uh, oh, I wonder how Paul's going in, because he's having his operation now, and uh, we'll prepare this uh, food for him, because he'll, you know, when he, when he comes out, he, he, he will be uh, hungry, and these bacon sandwiches will be, you know, yeah. his, his thing, and, and uh, all this kind of thing. I could see their brains going up in that way. Uh, so um, that was nice. Um, and then I could then see uh, past where I was um, being bullied, then try to understand why they was bullying me. I could see their thoughts and, and vice versa as well, because when I was bullied, um, I then thought, enough of this being bullied, I'm going to change it. I'm going to be the bully. And I bullied uh, other ones that were easier to, to bully from, from my perspective. Because yeah, I felt like I was slower in, in doing things and, and uh, you know, catch, catching up to people. So I believe a little bit for a little time, but I, I could also feel there, like, why is he bullying me? You know, and, yeah. and you know, why is he doing that to me? And, and I was going, I could feel their, their emotions. So I'm seeing everything from all perspectives uh, in the past. Uh, and then I saw uh, 
uh, what's the future, uh, which I didn't understand really until now, well, 40s, 30, 40s. Um, but uh, yeah, I saw things like Russia uh, being a big part in my life. I like to say when I came out from it all, I thought it was a bit of a, a daydream. I mean, not daydream, a, a real surreal dream that went off. I didn't realize I actually died. Um, so I thought it was just a very vivid dream. Um, never realized it was uh, predictions of, of the future. Yeah. I never realized what Russia was meant to be for me. For me. Yeah. Um, I saw myself driving. Um, I even saw um, previous deaths in lives before. I saw uh -huh. like a almost like a, a spiral of just death, 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 um, just small glimpses of, of that. One was um, being impaled with wooden spikes, uh, which was very vivid. That's one I remember the most. Um, but it kind of like gave me the thoughts of when I came to realise it wasn't a, a proper real near-death experience. So it was basically saying, you do come back, you do get, yeah. uh, you know, um, reincarnation uh, going off there um so yeah uh, the um the the things in the future uh, i saw uh, future death uh, and i I've, I've got a feeling that uh, if it if it was the one i saw that it, it will be a death in the future where i'll be probably in russia i'll probably be in there for that uh and uh, to i saw two young, you know, younger ladies than me yeah. uh, which Again, I'm zooming. It's my wife, it's my daughter. Um, yeah, like I think, but it was like an oldish looking guy, um, and uh, just naturally, just just naturally goes. Wow, I mean, that's quite an experience you had there then. And it sounds like then this, when you was having it, 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 like time doesn't exist, or you can be in several places all at once. Yeah, and, definitely. And, and the life review. I mean, that's quite profound, you know, because I know Russia plays a big part from reading the book. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that something that was told to you as well further back with a prediction from someone? I, I might have that mixed up. Um, um, a clairvoyant? I might have that. Uh, yeah, there was, there was, yeah. yeah, there was a clairvoyant. Yeah, um, there was, um, uh, again, a very good guy. Yeah. Uh, he, he was spot on, um, Wayne Anthony. Uh, yeah. uh, I think he lives in Derby still, mm -hmm. um, and um, he he basically said about Russia to me as well. Which I, I, yeah. and and he was also um, the the first thing that he, when I soon sat down, he, he said because uh, it was all about my mum really that when I went there because of my mum at the time because my mum was uh, ill, uh, and uh, it, so I sat down and it was very dim lights. Couldn't see him, see him very well. I don't I don't know. It felt like he was like almost like a, a spirit there. It was not like him. I don't know. Yeah. It felt like hard to say, really, but I didn't feel like he was. It's hard to work out who he was almost. Um, and um, and they're saying, um, Your mum's ill. I'm like, Yes. Breast cancer. I'm like, Oh, wow. You know, you know my, my mouth yeah. dropped, you know, and I thought, Gosh, he, he, he was spot on straight away. Well, as soon as that, he got me straight away thinking, like, yeah. Wow, he knows his stuff. Yeah, and he did, hmm. and that and and I think that came to fruition obviously with with your with your mom. I mean, that was a bit of a testing time, wasn't it? Especially for your dad as well. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and uh, and just 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 to reiterate as well, your, your family unit was um, quite an integral part of your life, wasn't it? I mean, mm. you had your uncles and stuff. You know, yeah. your family was quite um, well close knit. You had people you. You looked up to, wasn't it? Like certain uncles and stuff. Is it Ron? Yeah, Ron. Uncle Ron. Uh, right? Yeah, um, yeah. My, my, um, I've got. Um, oh, no longer here. Uh, my mm. uncle Roy. Roy. Um, yeah. Yeah, Uncle Roy. Uh, he um, again, spiritual guy. Uh, yeah. It's my cousin uh, Russ, who I played the organ because of yeah. him. Um, he, uh, his dad, uh, very was also very very spiritual, and he also had a very amazing powers with his hands he basically could uh, heal heal people's uh, issues with his hands um he basically i only had a few goes for them i think from my yeah. memory one particular memory i have of him was that he wasn't in the in the room when i when i got into the into the house into the into Roy, roy's house um is in my auntie stella said uh, 
Roy's just getting himself ready, just getting yeah. himself sat down. And uh, as uh, Roy then came in, he, he basically wasn't him. He was not, he was not Roy. Uh, he was like, um, what's it called? Uh, he meditated or something, but yeah. he basically wasn't looking like himself. He was talking in African language. He was, he was not, you know, he was, he yeah. was somewhere. Yeah. Roy was yeah. not. You know, always on there. So, but anyway, as he was doing that, he's he's shaking his hands above above my leg. Yeah. And uh, my leg was after the whole session. My, it was like suntan red, and no touching wow. of of it. Just his own energy yeah. talking and shaking his hands above my leg. And it was literally sunburnt red. Wow. And and did yeah. that because there was obviously some healing going on there, wasn't there? Because we yeah. troubles you having with your legs. Yeah. With your leg. At that time, mm-hmm. so yeah. um, just just going back to the near death experience, then I mean that's quite a profound experience. Did that change you? You know, how did that change you in your you know physicality of this world? If you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I basically when when I when I came back, um, yeah. I mean the the best bit about it, uh, and uh, not the best bit, but uh, the, one of the best bits about it was that uh, when I uh, was asked, Paul, oh, do you want to and they didn't say Paul. Uh, but do you want to go back to your buddy, or do you want to uh, stay here? Kind of thing. That was the the yeah. offer at the time uh, when I was when I was when I was dead. Um, and I was thinking to myself, um, I'm young still. I'm only 14, uh, and my family is there, and I've still got lots of learning to do. And and they got, at the same time, I'm thinking that they were also given that that same guidance as well. It's like. Uh, we're, we're hearing each other's thoughts. You know, it's not like I'm just thinking it and then that's it. They can't see what I'm thinking. They can see what I'm thinking. And they're saying like, yes, 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 you're right. You're, you know, almost like agreements with each other. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, I'm going to go back again. And as I'm thinking all this kind of stuff going off and um, I'm seeing, then I see the light. You know, when people say, do you, do you see the yeah, light? And yeah. I said, yeah, I saw the light. At that point, I'm seeing a light and it's like a, almost like a sun evolving very, very bright, warm, loving light. It's not uh, like I can't see, you know, because you don't have eyes in that realm anyway. Um, so, yeah, you, that, that was the choice. So I don't know what the light is. Um, is there a light to go into the next realm, into that bit? I don't know. But, um, yeah. So in regards to your question, um, so when I was came back, um, I was then yeah. to uh, Mr. Newton said to my parents, um, whilst I'm in the in the hospital bed, and I'm looking at this thing on my leg, and my brother's almost like fainting. But like, oh my goodness, yeah. put it away. Um, uh, and Mr. Newton says, uh, yeah, "Sorry uh, to my parents, we we lost Paul, uh, and there's now a big red sticker on, on his folder. We won't give it him again. You know all this kind of stuff." Yeah. So they said that they had to revive me, and I was going to. They had to tell them the parents that. So yeah. he did. He did tell them that, and uh, so he basically said, "Yeah, Paul." He did die, so it, it, was, it did a you know it was a real event, um, and then so I I still felt uh, okay that was a very vivid dream and normally dreams don't stay with me uh, they don't yeah. just you know the next day they're gone um, and and it's still memories now of, of this uh, event is still there uh, so that tells me many things and also years to go by and I'm 23, 24 and I'm seeing a, a documentary about near-death experiences and, um, and someone wow. says yeah, get to the body, I was at an angle uh, beings of light life review, and then you're like oh wow, okay, now I get it yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah so now it, it has made a huge impact on my life to know that yes, it, it, it happened to me and um, yeah, it, it, I think it happened for a reason I think I got pulled out of my body, have that experience to know what life is all about. Yeah. And, and there is reasons before to, to know that as well. And I think, you know, it's helped me to become who I am now, um, very more spiritual than religious, um, aware that re- reincarnation happens. I'm not scared of dying. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, I'm not yeah. running towards less. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not scared to die though. Um, because I know I just keep coming back anyway, uh, and I've, I've chosen this life, this body, to have these experiences to to learn patience, to learn so many many things. Um, but patience is one of them, definitely. Yeah, 
Yeah, and 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 I mean that again going forward <clears throat> from from what you just talked about there and your life with the near death experience. I mean, following all that as you you know going into early adulthood and into adulthood in the book, you 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 know I got this sense of your need for to be independent as well. And you mm. buying your own house, and you got you had various jobs, and you you got the the chocolate factory, <laughs> and yeah. which also catapulted you into a helping role, didn't it? With the was it the job centre, wasn't it? You was helping people right. find work. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> although there was in that, I think there's some things that you a bit of a dissatisfaction at, when you moved on from there, wasn't there? You know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's, yeah. And mm-hmm. I think yeah. um, at that point, um, there's a real struggle. It felt like, you know, when you explain it in the book, there's a, there's this bridge where you had a, quite a lot of struggles, wasn't there? You know, mm-hmm. in the house by yourself, trying to, you know, be independent. And that yeah. led you into a bit of a dark, darker time in your life. Definitely. Um, the, um, yeah, obviously I wanted to be by myself. Um, just... Only, only because I thought you know, by the year two thousand, it had to be something that I, you know major for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why yeah. it's just not a number, but I just felt to myself I need to get myself um, out and about. My brother had already left the nest quite young. My brother left yeah. the nest uh, around about eighteen, nineteen. You know, really young. Um, yeah. And uh, and I was I, again very influenced by my brother. Um, you know, very um, watching how he's developed and and I, i'm always like admiring that you know he's done really well for himself and um so i thought yeah i want to have my own house too you know and uh, so i saved up and saved up and uh, managed to then get myself a, a one-bedroom property uh and uh yeah and it was just before the well just before christmas happened of 2000 uh sorry the year 1999 yeah. came to 2000 um and uh, yeah so basically i got the, the property and i'm really happy I've uh, got my house decorated for the first time. Again, like this is my house. That's 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 my yeah. that's mine. You know, and the house that way. Um, and then uh, basically, uh, time goes by, uh, realizing that yeah, it's not all that great being by, by myself. I was single uh, most of the time. Um, I didn't have many girlfriends. I've tried many many times. Ain't wrong. I mean, um, dating was a bit of an issue. Um, yeah. I was, I would uh, get lots. Lots of like blind dates going off, like um, newspapers articles. You know, women like saying like, "Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm I'm, I'm this kind of thing." And so I'm like, well, "Hi, Debbie." You know, I'm, and I've got a disability, by the way. Oh, what's it, what's it like? Well, I can't really describe, but you'll see me when you see me. And and they always said, you know, "Yeah, you're a lovely guy." You know, you're just yeah. too nice. And 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 I just think, okay, so really, too nice means you don't like the legs. And so it, it, it's a bit of a package. It really mm. is. Um, so it takes a certain kind of character a lady to 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 like that really yeah and, and um, but um so yeah being single most of the time was a bit of an issue for me and uh so when it when i was uh, by myself a lot of the time i used to then have a few uh, drinks yeah. um and uh, so by like friday i used to have uh, a bottle of wine thinking like yeah it's friday a bottle of wine for this work you know friday a bottle of wine and then then it became saturday then it became Sunday. Then we were into like, oh God, it's Monday. Oh, drink. <laughs> you know, so literally it was started to like uh, snowball into uh, every day almost drinking. And it was not, it was not good. Um, and to the point where uh, I think uh, my, my health was not good. I, I was putting a lot more weight on. And um, basically uh, the, the, I had a um, premonition go off again. Uh, right. When, yeah. So, I was sitting in my in my own in my own room, uh, living room, and um, then it flashed back to the near death experience when I had the uh, predictions going up in the future, and it gave me like the feeling like uh, there are roads. Yes, there are certain things set in stone, but yes, there's also a bit of leeway, yeah. and uh, so I, I saw myself. Um, it sounds horrible, but I'll say it. But in my near-death experience, I saw myself being hanged uh, oh, in um, in my in that previous house yeah. on the, under the stairs because there's a bit of like a in the stairs it's like an open stair open plan yeah place so the stairs were like open stairs and you can like you can literally tie something between 
and you could you could have done that. And and uh, yeah, I think I got I was getting quite depressed and and, and uh, drinking a lot didn't help. And uh, and literally I was getting towards that that side thinking of thinking like life is not great, you know. And I was thinking you know let's just and then that, that moment thinking like do you remember that that that, that vision that you saw you know death experience Paul? My, this is my conversation yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's telling you something. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And then, and then from that point, I kind of like thought, yeah, this is not, this is not the way to go, Paul. Yeah. So, and then yeah. I, I reduced it slowly because I, I thought if I stood it like that, it would be not healthy. So I did it gradually. And I, and I, I, I don't get me wrong, I, I'll still have a drink, but not to the point now where I'm just completely... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it wasn't very different circumstances, isn't it, to what you're, you know, using, let's say, alcohol now compared to yeah. back then. So, yeah, I mean, did, was this the point when you reached out to Sue Gaskell? Um, I before? reached out to Sue uh, before. Um, mm. That was around about 20s. I was teaching uh, music lessons. That's what yeah. helped me to um, um, see Sue during yeah. the daytime. Um, yeah. So I could like do lessons around it and things like that. So um, Sue Gaskell, um, she is a brain counsellor yeah. um, and uh, she was living in Derby at the time. Uh, she's now moved to me, uh, New Zealand, but still does um, online yeah. uh, counselling as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so she basically saw me for that, for that time. Um, that was, um, again, being a young lad, 20s, uh, and, I, and I'm thinking... Well, if that's an edit experience, yeah. I didn't see myself being married. I'm thinking, yeah, this is not good. I'm going to just stay single all the time. You know, literally going off my head, I'm just going to be single all my life. Um, and because uh, I, I literally, I was trying to be dating, 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 but it wasn't happening. And the, the, I, I literally couldn't hold a relationship. I mean, literally, the longest relationship I had before my, one I, I'm now married to, 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 to Yulia, um, I, I think the longest relationship was around about six weeks. So that, right. that's how, you know, yeah. it was a one date. I was a one date man. That, that's how I felt it was. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I was getting quite depressed with that side of things, thinking like I'm just, uh, and, and plus also it was the repercussions of being bullied in school. Um, mm. And um, there's lots of things like self-harming going off as well. Uh, yeah. I was self-harming a lot uh, because of uh, all that physical, mental yeah. pain. I think it was... I was using them physical pain to get rid of the emotional pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, the effort uh, that Sue had uh, was basically saying that uh, I'm not a fully qualified uh, counsellor, but I'm qualified in a lot of life experiences. And I thought, yeah, that's the one I want to go for. I didn't want to really like a clinical psychologist yeah. uh, kind of feeling. Yeah. So I wanted someone that's got a lot of experiences. Um, when I came and sat with her, I told her lots and lots of things, got lots of things off my shoulders. Um, and uh, she said, Paul, you're like a, a swan swimming on the lake. So you're looking beautiful and graceful, but really your legs are going. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's what I felt really. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of hard work going on underneath. Yeah. You, yeah. So things under the surface. So, I mean, she was a, quite a, a, you know, integral part of your life, wasn't it? Really, too. Definitely. Yeah. Around that time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, become good friends. I, yeah, good friends as yeah. well. Yeah, we. Uh, I had uh, one-to-one counselling for about a couple of years. Got rid of a lot of, you know, things off my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, um, then I went into like group therapy and met a lot of lovely people that had also one-to-one, but then wanted to a very really nice group. Uh, and uh, and yeah, that, that was amazing uh, experiences. Lots of uh, sharing each other's lives, and uh, yeah, it was really help just helping each other really, which was nice community. Yeah, yeah, and and um, I think that that can be quite helpful in a group situation sometimes where you you know you're sharing with other people. It sort of normalises things, you know, mental health a little bit more. I think from you know, Definitely. obviously yeah. sounds that way for yourself and and sharing your you know issues and difficulties. So mm-hmm. I mean, Paul, just to to move forward because yeah, I, I think because you mentioned about the prediction as well with Russia. And this, mm. and you know, the, the difficulty dating, and in and in the book, it's not you wasn't sure to get in attention from the females, may I add, but um, your life took a turn, and it, it involved Russia, didn't it? Because yeah. uh, 
I think you you went to Russia and you to where you met your wife. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So um, how it happened was basically uh, my uh, friend Lee. Uh, basically, he was uh, um, a pianist as well, so musical yeah. like myself. We met at uh, college, um, and uh, I met uh, great people. Um, Lee was one of them, and Dave as well. I'm still keeping contact with both uh, people. Uh, very good organist is Dave as well and uh, yeah, yeah so anyway so Lee was going off into faces playing uh, piano uh, he met a lovely lady um, waitress uh, at the time but also a very very good pianist as well wow. uh, and um, so she's a Russian lady and so whilst they're dating each other they said uh, do you want to just you know contact uh, Yulia and um, she wants to learn English I said, okay, fine, no problem at all. And, and I knew that uh, from writing to each other, uh, it was just that she wants to learn English. She wasn't after a relationship. Um, and by that time, I'm, I'm thir- uh, early 30s, and I'm thinking, um, yeah, okay, right, well, we'll just, just go with it. Let's just go with it, shall we? And uh, so it gave me something to do as well. So that's another thing. It was a bit of a hobby to say what it's like in England. She learned a bit of English, and uh, I learned a bit of Russian, of course. Um, and then um, two years or three years later, Lee and Kate gets married in Russia. So off I went over to, to Russia, uh, met Yulia, and uh, by, that, by that time, um, Anya, her, her daughter, um, was uh, about two years old. Um, yeah. So we've been always, obviously, you know, from, from her birth, from, from after you haven't been pregnant, to the birth and then uh, all that kind of thing. So we, I've known her uh, from really, I've known Anya from, from day one. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so anyway, so by that time, yeah, she, she's a, a baby, quite young still. And I'm saying hi to her, but obviously she's, she's, she's not aware of me really. Um, and then um, anyway, Yuli is not really talkative in the sense of like knowing a lot of English language to talk to me. So we're just in like water, oh, fada, yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm learning Russian a little bit and she's learning a bit more English with me, but nothing happened, no no, no spark. Um, then, um, anyway, the marriage happened, I came back to England, we continued to write to each other, a couple of years goes down the line, um, and I'm, like I say, I'm still drinking then quite a lot. Yeah, I'm right. thinking, Yeah, and I'm thinking then by... The, the two years, um, I'm thinking, really, I need to move house. That, that, was, that, was, my, that was my head. Thinking like, right. if, I'm, if I'm in this house, I'm going to die. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's really, you know. um, and uh, so I then put my house on the, on the market. Um, it wasn't happening, um, and it, it, it came off the market. I ended up with a bit of money, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to tell that money and use it as another holiday. And I went off to Russia again. Um, so I went off to Russia again just to say hi to Yulia. Uh, have a proper holiday this time. Yeah. Uh, we didn't do. Uh, it was more about the. Ho- it was more about the wedding. Uh, yeah. The previous one. So this one was was uh, seeing the rest where it was all sorts of things. It was amazing. So we went to, to Russia. Yulia's then learned learned a lot more English, and uh, by that time uh, Anya uh, was older, and uh, she started saying Papa this, Papa that, and like. Is she saying I'm dad? And Yuli's like saying, yeah, she's saying you're dad. Yeah. I'm like, okay. You know, which was quite cute. Yeah. And I was thinking like, that's nice, that's nice. Um, and uh, anyway, so the day before the flight home, we went to Moscow, went to uh, the, the, the uh, rest square, went to Kremlin, all this kind of thing. Um, and then we went to this um, white, white church, Golden Globes, massive uh, church. Um, beautiful place. Went inside it, and uh, we're looking around, and uh, it's 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 very like wow, it's beautiful, and it, and we went quite a, quite uh, philosophical. Um, I can't remember the conversation fully, um, but like I say, Yuri is English by then; it's a lot better than my Russian. Uh, and and I basically then said about my my near death experience, and so we sat down, started talking about it. And said, you know, about what things I, I, I learned. And she suddenly like going to like tears. I'm like, what's wrong? You know, and I, I, mutually, I just go like, oh, come here, come here. And then she, she's like, yeah. her, shoulder, her head's on my shoulder. I'm like, everything's okay. Everything's good. And she looks at me, I'm looking at her and then I'm like, okay, the spark has just gone off yeah. my head. 
Again, like, I, I want I want this steak. Yeah. I'm quite happy yeah. with this. And, and she's looking at me like, I'm liking this too, kind of thing. And we were like, so yeah. confused because from pay, you know, just being paid pen pal to so thinking like, this is going to be difficult. This is yeah. going to be Russia and, and, and holidays. And, and but anyway, we, we, we had a lot of dates. Uh, I went to Russia a lot. She, went, she came to England. Uh, and you um, came to England a few times as well. And uh, yeah, eventually uh, got married in, in Russia uh, 2008. Wow. And, and all with the predictions as well and the connections with Russia and, and, and just yeah. the way it worked out. And uh, obviously they do uh, a wedding a bit different, which is in the book. So if people read the book, they can read all about yeah. that and how different... <laughs> Yeah, I so did, I didn't yeah. see. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see the white wedding. I saw. I saw a gathering of some sort. Yeah, a special gathering. Yeah, but I didn't realize it was a, a not a white wedding in that way. No. Wow. So yeah. Again, so and 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 your wife is a she's a talented musician as well, which she is, is you've got that in common, haven't you? That that commonality. Yeah, definitely. And, she's a, a violinist and yeah. a very very talented lady. And uh, she does concerts, so I've put a, uh, many, many videos on, on YouTube. Check, check, yeah. them, check them out. Uh, Yulia Northridge, um, yeah, so you'll see her, her playing if you like. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's it's almost in the book. It's like you, I felt so good for you when you, you know, this happened and you, you know, you two met. So for, for me with the book, that that's for, you know the impact like that it felt really you know real when I, I can imagine it you know and, and it felt really exactly. good for you you know that you'd met mm-hmm. somebody and you you both work well together and and you know you accept each other which is it, yeah a relationship I mean no relationship's perfect but you know you, you've found that connection that soulmate so to speak it's not like- yeah, Paul, do you want to tell us a little bit about the wedding? Because it, 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 it wasn't, um, you know, what you was used to, you know, because things are a little bit different in Russia as well, aren't they? You know, and you was uh, yeah. your Russian language <laughs> at that time. Um, yeah, I it still is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you just tell us a little bit about that because it is quite fascinating in the book as well. Yeah, um, so basically, um, yeah, so when I was... Uh, um, in getting married for the uh, Russian wedding, uh, we, we decided uh, that Yulia uh, wanted a uh, turquoise uh, dress. Uh, the reason why is because uh, she'd been previously married, and so that was a white wedding uh, type thing. And mm-hmm. uh, so she wanted a little bit different uh, for this one. Um, so I had a matching uh, shirt color uh, yeah. to her dress as well, and uh, so it was quite uh, unified in, in that way. Um, and uh, yeah, so the wedding was brilliant. It was in a reg- registry uh, office uh, type thing. And the uh, best thing about it for, for, for you this side, um, because, because she's a violinist um, yeah. and very talented one, like I said uh, earlier, um, she was also playing in, that, in the registry office uh, in a quartet. Uh, so every time it was a wedding, wow. she was playing the violin uh, for, for weddings. And um, so she knew the people that was playing in the... In the wedding as well, which is nice. Um, and then, um, yeah, there, there was a, a lady next to me uh, doing the translation, so I was hearing what the the person was saying to, to get us uh, officially married together, um, and that was really good. Um, and then um, once uh, once all that happened, uh, everyone came around me was you know cheers, champagne, yeah. and yeah. was breaking into some kind of a bread. It's like a uh, you have to like dip it in some salt and, and yeah. all sugar, and mm. everyone have a piece of them off in this bread out to people. And uh, yeah, and I learned a little bit of Russian, don't get me wrong, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not fluent. Uh, Yulia is very, very fluent in English, uh, makes me feel really um, but I, I speak very good uh, gobbledygook, uh, yeah. and I speak very good English. Uh, on good on good days, I speak very good English, on bad days, I'm, I'm gobbledygook, terrible, terrible. Uh, this 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 and that don't always want to work out, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I think that's part of my my issue as well. From because um, when I was younger, 
I had uh, speech therapy uh, as well. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, I, I had struggles with speech uh, when I was yeah. younger, and I, it's kind of like stayed with me a little bit. Um, when I found out uh, later on in, in life, they did a, a, a scan on my brain, um, yeah. and because uh, of the hydrocephalus, um, it basically had ended up with a thing called a Chiari. I can't say well Chiari malfunction. Right. It's um, basically a bit of a squashed brain. It was a bit right. squashed. Yeah. And uh, so things are not always uh, working out too too well. I think that makes me feel a bit more tired. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I go back to Russia I, again. I'm very tangent, so I'm, I'm a book. I'm very yeah. tangent. Yeah. Um, but uh, the wedding uh, was brilliant, though, and um, the, the the things I can always and it will always stay in my brain. Um, uh, uh, basically, my, my dad-in-law uh, he's longer here, um, but bless him. Um, he basically um, he picked up Yulia. Yeah. Uh, he was dancing with her uh, on "I Do I Do I Do" in in the, in Abba. You know, doing the song yeah. "I Do yeah. I Do I Do." And uh, yeah, so he's there uh, dancing with her, and then he picks her up in his arms, and he's he's uh, Yulia's face like, oh, what? But yeah. he's daddy, like picked her up, and then he's like, he, and he's like holding her, and then he's bringing her then towards me, he's yeah. sitting down, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he basically then uh, gives gives her him, he passes him uh, her to me. And I'm like dancing with her while swaying with her on, on the yeah. sofa. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was the memory that will always stay with me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what a great moment and, and yeah. you know, time in your life, uh, you know, to find that partnership and that person. Definitely. And, and yeah. not just that person, a beautiful daughter. And yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, she, uh, I mean, obviously, being a Russian girl, yeah. uh, she had to then, and then come. To England with 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 Yulia, uh, and it was quite funny at the start because she's like Yulia's translating to Anya, yeah. all this stuff, and then Anya's then talking to to Yulia, and and then translating to me, you know. So yeah. it's a bit like a mediation going off all the time. But for, for, but then because she was so young, uh, she picked up English so yeah. so easily. We basically threw her. Sounds horrible, but we threw her into school. She arrived in August. September, she was in school and uh, not knowing any English hardly. Wow. All she did was like nursery rhymes. You know, she was she was learning nursery rhymes in Russia, in English, like uh, rain, the rain in Spain, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, but she didn't know much English. And uh, but anyway, by doing that, it made a you know young brain mm-hmm. absorb, and she did absorb really well. And now you won't even know she's Russian. She's got wow. a Derbyshire Derbyshire accent and. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So, and now she's uh, she's at uni. She's doing uh, sports uh, rehabilitation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so she's uh, doing really, really well. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that's where we are at the moment. Wow, life's good. Change of it, you mm-hmm. know, with things. So, I mean, yeah. j- just to ask them, uh, Paul, you know, what prompted you to r- to write the book? What was what was really behind that? Yeah, uh, the book uh, was done, I think, early 40s. I had this like uh, idea to uh, have a, an a autobiography going off uh, around that time because I thought it's a good time uh, yeah. to do it. Um, and because so a lot of things went off. And I'm thinking, really, uh, the main part of it was the near death experience. I wanted people to uh, know what it's like and, yeah. and uh, to, to know everything's okay when you die. Yeah, trying to try to think of it as like a birth, death, life goes on, and all that kind of thing, and not to take it. I mean, yes, it's heartbreaking when people die, um, but um, at the end of the day, it's still memories go on and all that kind of thing as well. So uh, I tried to give people the, the feelings of that. Um, I wanted to help people about um, self harm. I want to help help people about uh, depression. Um, what, if anyone had a disability, I want people to, you know, work out, you know, why we're here with disabilities, all that kind of thing as well. So, uh, and also to have a bit of humour, like I said in my book, I, it's all about humour as well. I'm a, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I've got all emotions going off, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly, but I try to always have a bit of a, a laugh as well in the middle. Wow. I mean, yeah, I'd like to say, I've, I've, I had a copy of the book, I bought it a while ago and then I, well, we'll give it the title, it's called... Uh, Walk a life, feet on the ground. 
and, uh, and when did that come out, Paul? How long ago was uh, that now? Because you, when you published it. Yeah, about six years ago. Six years, about six yeah. years ago, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I basically did it a few goes. I, I wrote it in, in third person. Uh, yeah. Paul is da da da. Paul is yeah. da da da. Yeah. And uh, and I gave it to my cousin Russ uh, to read it, and uh, he liked it. Don't get me wrong, he liked it. And then yeah. I begin. Uh, but then there's also feedback saying not third person though. And so rewrote it again, <laughs> and uh, so I did all that. And then um, once I was really really happy with it, uh, I gave it to Michael Feely. Oh uh, yes, Michael. Yeah, Michael Feely. Um, again, we've had him on uh, Unite Planet, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Great guy. Uh, he yeah. knows his stuff about so many, many wow. things. He's yeah, uh, yeah. excellent um, researcher and, and yeah, he's doing yeah. doing well at the moment as well, isn't he? Uh, on iconic and yeah, he's out of years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, so he uh, basically also has a, a publishing company, yeah. uh, and it's called uh, Sazmic. So I yeah. think it's like Sarah and Mick Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Sazmic uh, Publishing um, read my book. And uh, I said uh, to Mick, you know, do you think it's going to be good enough to, to, to publish? So he, re- he read it and uh, he said, Paul, get it out there. I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. off I went and uh, and I said, would you mind doing it for me? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. Um, so uh, they, they did it for me and uh, they, they were brilliant. Um, the, um, they also then gave it a proofreader um, from, from their own yeah. connections. Yeah. The proofreader was awesome. Amazing. She, she made it so... She, she basically showed me, Paul, um, this is the red bits of bits that I've changed. Okay. So she like gave me that to, to read. Yeah. Literally, it was like red, red, red. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing was yeah. like, okay. So she basically changed it so many things. Uh, she did an amazing job. She ironed out the wrinkles. <laughs> Tom yeah, exactly. Lots yeah, of, yeah. They're yeah, good at that. Lots of wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah, she did. I and, mean, it uh, re- yeah. reads really well, actually. Um, yeah. <clears throat> flows really well you know with, mm-hmm. with the timeline and, and you do you do jump back it's not linear there's some jumping oh. back and then going forward so you know it's it's not you know a straight ahead thing it, it's really good the way it reads and the way the chapters are, are broke up um mm-hmm. thank so, you yeah, yeah yeah so i mean that's like i say um with that just I just want to understand a bit with the Unite Planet thing and how that started, because that again that involved Johnny Sinclair, who I've mm-hmm. met and good friends with as well, um, yeah. yourselves, and and you've had me on, and it's mm-hmm. been, I've just felt it's been really great that I can sort of repay back a little bit. Not that I, you know, it's like that, but it's nice to be able to ask you on and do it the other way around rather than. Yeah. You know, talking about yeah. me you know i wanted to have you on and talk about you and your book and you know, yeah thank you so yeah. um, how, how did that yeah. get started you know um yeah so uh, i think around about again 40s uh, uh around the same same time as the book maybe a little bit before actually um, yeah i was uh, thinking um i wanted to do something uh about near-death experiences and spiritualism and and all sorts of things like that um and something came to my head. Again, I don't think sometimes our thoughts are really our our own thoughts. I think sometimes yeah. I'm tapping into something. It's not. I don't think I'm always thinking these things. I think things are being for not well fed into me. Yeah. Um, and uh, so a thought came to my, to my head, thinking like, uh, "Yeah, you're not panicked, okay?" Um, and uh, I thought, "Okay, well, let's let's go with it then." And um, then I, I gave uh, someone an idea to do me a logo, and yeah. uh, I wanted like uh, nice colours um, and uh, warm colours. And so she came up with this idea, and uh, I thought, yeah, that's, that logo is, yeah. you know, it's it's my kind of thing. And uh, when when I saw that, I thought, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was hoping for. And uh, yeah, so she did an amazing job on that logo for me. Um, and then, um, but then it just sat. Uh, by, by myself, I'm, I'm not really, I, I'm like I've probably been hearing already, you know, when I'm by yeah. myself, I'm not that brilliant. I need, I need, I need something to spark yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, and um, so um, on Facebook, um, Johnny, uh, Johnny Sinclair, uh, who I met from Thornton's, um, he was uh, still on Facebook with me as a friend. Um, not seen him for a long, long time, but obviously through friends of, on Facebook. Um, 
he was posting things about 9 11 and uh, all the type of things that I was also posting about because lots of things didn't ring true for, for 9 11 for me. And yeah. uh, so he was basically saying the same thing. And I thought, nice guy, same thoughts. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not seeing for ages. So let's meet up with him. Um, so I went off uh, to a pub, uh, talked about the idea of you know, planet and uh, what I wanted to do with it, um, interview guests and yeah. Uh, yeah, just talk about all sorts of things. And uh, he said, Paul, I love it. I want to do it. And, and I'm thinking, okay, good. And so the ball in motion happened and uh, Andrew Johnson, um, we basically went off to watch a conference in, um, was it Sheffield? The, uh, the Gary, Gary Hazeltine uh, runs. Oh, yes. UFO yeah. Truth Magazine. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, so we went there and uh, Andrew, Johnson, Andrew Johnson was there um, and he did a brilliant conference uh, um, uh, presentation there yeah. um, and uh, had a few chats with him and uh, found out he was very local uh, to me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I said, uh, would you mind doing the chats about 9 11? And uh, and then so yeah, so he kicked it off really. But if he said no, it probably wouldn't have gone off at all. Yeah. Um, so with him saying yes, and yeah, so that really helped a lot to get you know kind of going really. Yeah, helped you establish. I mean, that's how I found you was through Andrew's interview actually. So exactly. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So it's a, you know, funny how things work out. And he's he's been exactly. on the show numerous times, hasn't he, about different <laughs> subjects because Andrew's. Yeah. Covers quite a few subjects, and, and he, he does. Um, yeah. Brother, I, I really like your your yours and John's um, uh, rapport. What you mm. what you add, you know. Yeah. Um, you've got the humorous side as well with your videos that you do. Oh dear me! Oh oh, oh dear! Oh Johnny, you oh. okay, pal? You're all right, mate. Yeah, just uh, just got a bit of wood. You know, yeah. it's not, not all yeah. serious and, you know, doom and gloom or anything. I mean, you cover different subjects. It's not just uh, the conspiratorial stuff. But you you, uh, you touch on the, the paranormal, um, spiritual. Yeah. Um, you've done the field trips, haven't you, as well, which I've seen on your yeah. YouTube. That's correct. Right. You know, some really great content there. Yeah. Mm, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I think you took on... Bernardo got involved as, with that, didn't he? Bernardo that's right. and uh, Donna. Donna, Donna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we tend to like uh, not have um, uh, Bernardo. Uh, he's doing his own thing now yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and Donna um, still keeping contact with each other. Um, but I think she wants to, again, do her own thing, which is yeah. completely yeah. fine. You know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, you take it, it happens. We're not, uh, you know, in any way with, with that on Donna. Yeah, and, yeah. You know. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, but, uh, Johnny himself are, are still doing many, many things. Uh, but at the moment, you're not planet is a bit more uh, quiet because of uh, I'm doing uh, a counseling course now, right? Yeah, um, and um, so I'm doing level two at the moment, yeah. and uh, at the same time, I'm doing another course um, yeah. for work. Uh, so I'm doing two level. Uh, level two courses yeah Uh, yeah. therefore i'm doing lots of uh, assignments at the moment and that i can't do anything more with your planet at the moment so but it will it will be back it will be back (laughs) yeah yeah well you had you 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 did put out a lot of content you know over the the years and uh, Mm. it's not a bad thing to have a little bit of a a break and the the it takes a lot of brain power we studying as well so it's good that you're perhaps focusing on you know mm-hmm. the here and now of what what's prioritised, isn't it? You know, I guess. For yourself. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, some point I'd like to have Bernardo on because, like you say, he's gone off on a different path. Yeah, um, you know, and, and see see what his journey's about as well. So, yeah, let's go with anything. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, uh, it's back to that helping role, isn't it? Again, Paul, with the counselling, mm. and is yeah. this something you you're pursuing? you know, uh, up to training level, what, what's your, um, you know, your intention with, with the counselling courses? Yeah, um, I want to get to fully qualified. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 50, but I, I still feel quite young uh, yeah. in my head. Uh, so I feel like uh, I can go into retirement still doing the role. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what I want to do, and just help help people to you know get their lives back to to not to 
some normality again. Yeah. Um, I think um, you know all this lockdown stuff is going to be major repercussions. Um, yeah. And not just that, you know, lots of things that's gone off anyway. But yeah. um, I think uh, yeah, COVID has caused a lot of um, you know mental health issues. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's had a quite a knock on effect for people, hasn't it? I guess you know in the, yeah. in the long run, the bigger picture, so to speak. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so. Again, you know, I'm just while I'm here, I'm going to promote Unite Planet because you kindly sent me two t shirts, which I do wear with, <laughs> with pride. <laughs> just like <laughs> and I really oh, like you. that. I really like the bit at the bottom as well. Yeah, don't fight, let's unite. So, is that is exactly? That, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, where is it there? Yeah. So, here to unite and not fight. Please come mm. and join us. I mean, it's great. You know, thanks for the T-shirts, which you... Oh, you're welcome. A good while ago. You said... Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's just the idea of, um, you know, not to be... Um, anything to do with, like, uh, differences. Because I think uh, yeah. the major game that... Um, the, the people that we can't see behind the scenes, I yeah. think... Uh, the, people, the people that run the politicians. Yeah. Uh, that's what uh, the major thing is. Um they basically are, um, yeah. Divide and conquer is the biggest play rule that they play by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's like you say. It's one thing that we're we're in a diverse society, let's say. But yeah. you know, on the other hand, that uh, that can be exploited. I guess you know, the more we divide Design. society, then people with mm. different or you know not good agendas can really uh, use that against us sometimes, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah, as much as I, you know, like people to embrace themselves and, and, and you know, and pursue their authentic self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it can be yeah. a bit difficult. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, the, the, exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, the, you know, people are, are very, like, pr proud of their heritage and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that, that to be proud, it's like what George Conan said about being proud. Yeah. Uh, it's basically, you, you know, uh, he's, a, he's Irish in, in, in nature, but I think yeah. it is, he was born into it. So, how can you be, it's not something that you've achieved, yeah, proud of, something yeah. to be proud of, something you've done and achieved. Yeah. So, I don't really get uh, all this, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm black and I'm proud of it, or, you know, I'm white and proud of it. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. It's your character that, like, like yeah. uh, Martin Luther King will say, you know, it's more yeah. about your character than, yeah. than anything else. And, and I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, con like you say, get the content of the character, isn't it? Rather than yes. perhaps the, the color of somebody's skin or, yeah. you know, sexuality or, or, or whatever, exactly. really. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I suppose it goes back to, like you say, with your near-death experience about the realms of, uh, you know, we are just consciousness, really. But I suppose in the five sense world, they want us to identify with something. Yes. It's, again, exactly. creating more division, isn't it? You know, the more yeah. you divide yeah. something up, the more division you have. Exactly. And that's it. Seems to be yeah. the way, you know. Uh, and like, like we say, we... We want people to be themselves <laughs> and authentic. Mm, yeah. But again, yeah. with that, that can be quite frightening for people to be themselves because of judgment, you know, yeah. about that difference again. But I mean, you yeah. do go in at the end of the book, don't you? You you cover some of this uh, 9 11 and, and things like that in the in the back of the book, don't you? Which you That's right. mention about that. Yeah, I've got uh, like about, uh, I can't remember how many bullet points. I think it's about, about 15 yeah. uh, bullet points yeah. in, in that same way. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's been criticised a little bit on, on that, saying it went into a bit of uh, conspiracy theory at the end, uh, which yeah. is which is fine. It's not everyone's yeah. cup of tea. I can, I can understand that. Um, but, I mean, if they understood um, things like uh, Building 7 going down by itself without being any plane hitting it. Yeah. Um I mean, how many buildings take a, an office fire and yeah. then the sun goes down? It's, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that doesn't happen. Uh, as far as I can remember, there's not been an office fire and then the whole bit. You know, look at Grenfell, yeah. Grenfell Towers. It burned for how long? It did it fall down? Yeah, yeah, didn't fall down. <laughs> yeah. Again, again, like, like you say there, you know, um, again, that, that need to label somebody. <laughs> conspiracy theorist yeah. or you're talking yeah. conspiracy theories you know 
Um, I'm not going to get on my, my platform too much, <laughs> but um, okay. it, you know, it can be used. That's quite a derogatory, you know, it's how you yes. feel in your opinion. And, and let's, you know, people don't have to fall out over somebody else's uh, perspective or frame of reference on an yeah. event, you know, yeah. but it just seems lately they talk a bit like a crime to think differently, which yeah. is a bit of a shame really. And, and uh, you know, I agree. Myself, myself and probably, you know, I'm going to put words in your mouth, but, you know, to be labelled sometimes a conspiracy theorist or whatever, or believing in those type of things, is, you know, can be a bit derogatory towards the person. Exactly. You know, yeah. rather than being a bit free and, and, you know, people do have different opinions or, you know, they don't want to look at that stuff. That's fine. You know, just yeah, scroll through. It. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, it's like um, conspiracy theory uh, was really a term used more, I think, towards the JFK side of things. Yeah. From what I remember. Yeah. Uh, because, Garrison, yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, they, they didn't want uh, people to uh, start thinking uh, one yeah. one shooter could have done all that kind of yeah. bullets and, and that kind of thing. So thinking like, let's to use a derogatory term, conspiracy theory. Yeah. And, and it, it stayed then after that, really. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame, really. I like to really say a bit more like a critical think here, think kind of yeah. think rather than a conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah, and, and Andrew always reminds us he's um, you know, there's a difference between belief and knowledge and evidence and belief. You know, yeah, you can't exactly. take a belief into the courtroom, can you? And they'd want evidence. So, yeah, yeah. and often yeah. I think that's a bit of a fuzzy area, isn't it, in people's thinking? The main exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, from from the nine eleven side of things, you know, um, how could uh, a an airplane fly so low to the Pentagon and then hit the Pentagon, you know, at such yeah. a speed? I mean, lots of pilots saying like, "How can that? You know, are that, are that 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 low? That's that that speed." Plus, yeah. also amateur pilots and all that kind of thing. Plus, also the Pentagon, yeah, major uh, building that that uh, they maybe have. Weaponry to stop things going off like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's lots of things like going off in, in my head, and uh, you know, and people should really question that one, and they should also question the one that uh, went into the ground. It basically went into like a sinkhole. The airplane yeah, just like yeah. like Shanksville. can't see. Yeah, uh, yeah, know, Shanksville. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that that in itself is also a bit of a mystery, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, again, you you. When you question that, you you can often get a well, you know, you shouldn't question it because it's going to upset the family members and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, again, at the end of the day, I think people are trying to just look for the truth, aren't they? You know, yeah. and, and I, I can't think of any other higher form of respect to family members than getting to the bottom of the truth. Really. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why my hat's off to you, mate, on that one, because you do. You what you did it for the good enough reasons, and uh, you know, so you know that's why you, you know you're great, great researcher, and same like with Andrew as well, we're own researchers. So you know, keep doing it, mate. Well, well, thank you. But Paul, you know, we're we're manoeuvring the end now, and it's I feel like it's been a great catch up with you and, in, and you know an interview and to really talk about your book because um, you know it's something I've wanted to talk about for a long time, which you know I've been back and forth with you about it. I've known for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, and you. it just feels, you know, really good that I could you know, have you on the show and talk about this book. So just for people, you know, I'll put the links below on uh, Amazon. Perhaps you can tell us where you can they can get the book, Paul. Yeah, Amazon, definitely. And uh, there's also like Goodreads and um, I think it's on um, Woodstones, I believe. Uh, yeah. As far as I remember, I think it's on Woodstones. Uh, but I think Amazon is a major one and you can get it as a... Uh, What's it called? Uh, ebook as well oh, through yeah. Amazon, mm -hmm. and uh, we're trying to get it. Um, uh, my daughter's actually uh, had the idea just recently, just recently about Audible, and uh, oh, so yeah. we, we're going to try and get it on uh, Audible uh, in yeah. the near future. Wow, that'd be great because Audio. Yeah. I, I do uh, subscribe to Audible, so okay, I do cool. catch a lot of books like that when I'm on yeah. the move or I'm, you know, doing tasks. I can listen to the book in the background, so it's yeah. good to get that on there. Um, really? Yeah, I think I think I just got Mark Devlin's book actually uh, as well. Oh, Even though I've got yeah, them in night. hardback, you know, I've got yeah. a couple of his volumes, so I've got yeah. a couple of his on Audible. Yeah, 
which is good to yeah. just put on in you know if you're in the car and things like that. So yeah, yeah, and and, and Unite Planet um is on hold for a little bit, but you will be back. We'll be back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll be back and uh, much, much stronger and powerful. We'll have a, a website up as well. Um, we've got a guy that uh, um, is, is in the background and uh, he will uh, get that working. Um, we're we're going to go for more. Plus, I'm getting better with the old uh, counseling course and uh, yeah. other things that I'm doing as well. Um, then we'll get it all going again. And uh, so looking like early um, next year that we'll get the website up as well. Wow, brilliant, brilliant. Well, I'll mm-hmm. put all the links in the uh, show notes and redirect people over to your, you know, uh, to get your book and, you know, even contact you and reach out to you. Mm-hmm. Thank You're you. on Facebook, yeah. aren't you, your author? You're on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Facebook, uh, the author page, uh, page uh, so Paul Northridge, uh, things as, I think it's Paul Northridge author, yeah. or book or something. Yeah. But, um and uh yeah, and then also Unite Planets is on Facebook as well. Um also YouTube, uh, you can find us there, bit shoot. Yeah. YouTube is terrible with uh, censoring now videos, by the way. I've noticed yeah. a lot of uh, content just vanishing and uh, we've had a few strikes saying yeah. you know, don't do that again. Yeah. I've been told off for, for saying lots of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Apparently, hate speech. Uh, United Planets is all about hate, you know, hate speech. Yeah. Ridiculous. Exactly. Ridiculous. Yeah. So, any any future, well, is there any future plans for another book at all, Paul? And I know right at the moment, not that, but is there, is there anything in the back of your mind that you might do, consider doing another book or? Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny enough, uh, we uh, started doing another one. Um, it's about uh, what is what. I don't know what the title will be exactly, but at the moment it's uh, what is a United Planet? And uh, basically just going through um, how I see um, utopia. Oh, um, yeah. And how, yeah. To, and how to get there. It's basically, uh, we, we, we need a whole new reset on the, the government side of things. Yeah. I mean, for, you know, I, I don't want to be too political, uh, yeah. but for a, a party leader uh, who's done the opposite of like, stay safe, you know, lock down, yeah. all this kind of thing. And he's yeah. done completely. 360 yeah. of that um, and uh, yeah so that really in itself is, is saying like uh, you know we, we put these people into power we have the power yeah. put them in yeah. and then they they're telling us what to do it's it's yeah. it's like uh, it's a it's the wrong way of it's, it's the wrong way of thinking yeah we, we put them in they should be then our voices that's what they was there for originally yeah. but they're not yeah. our voices anymore obviously yeah um, so yeah, we need a, uh, a lie detector test at these uh, elections and uh, all that kind of thing <laughs> should go off. Yeah, uh, honestly, I don't really yeah. believe that. You know, we need a we need something like a lie detector, or um, yeah. everyone should have a, a go on uh, what's it called uh, ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you'd get many MPs if you had to do like a lie detector test? Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you would. No. You don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they are a It'd be great ones. Yeah, at a, uh, yeah, at a debate, you know, uh, you know, did, did you have a, a party at uh, Christmas time? Yeah, it's, it's also attached to a little bit of electric shock. Uh, yeah. No one into attend any party. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen an experiment like that once, where they yeah. did that on people with electric shocks. Well, pretended to do. The Milgram oh, experiment. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? I think I might have posted it. Yeah. But that would be yeah. a really good experiment for MPs just to get some honest. You know, some, some. You know, I'm not saying all of them are bad, but no. there's a select few who seem to be running the show who seem yeah. to run everything. But yeah, Paul, oh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and, and on the podcast. Oh, thank you, Mel. Thank yeah, you, and and sharing your experience. You know, oh, it hasn't been too uh, <laughs> too much for you, but I really no. enjoyed the book, and I thought it'd be nice to really lay that out. You mm-hmm. know, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I thoroughly really enjoyed Mark, yeah. and it's been a pleasure yeah. talking to you. It's nice uh, uh, energy, nice, uh, relaxed, uh, and I've enjoyed talking to you so much. So thank you. Yeah, thanks ever so much for coming on. And hopefully we can have you on again and talk about anything we want to talk about or you want to yeah. talk about, yeah, in the future. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Really thank enjoy you. that. So I'm mm-hmm. going to leave it there. So check the show notes for Paul's book and the links for that and Unite Planet and uh, give him a thumbs up if you visit his uh, Facebook and um, purchase the book if you can afford it and, and 
you know, support Paul. You know, so look after yourself, Paul, and we'll see everybody again soon. Yeah, Bye for now. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.